Welcome back to Long Box Diving, where we explore comics and story arcs pulled from the Long Box. Multiple of them, yes. And this is our normal, you know, weekly. We do a quick yeah. fire review, a normal quick fire review, where we quick fire review, sort of quick fire. It takes about an hour usually to go through all our comics that we picked up that week on New Comic Book Day. <laughs> and we kind of explain it from the old fogies point of view and from mine, the Young Whatever. Whippersnappers yeah. point of view. Yeah. Um, there's just one problem. There was no new comic books this week. None. Dun, dun, dun. No, no. So how do you quick fire review a comic you haven't even picked up because there's no new comic books? So instead, what we We do... pirated them. No, don't, don't, no. Goober. All right, so yeah, don't say that. You get us in a lot of trouble. Um, we did not pirate them. What we decided to do is I'll pull some comics out of my long box or short box. He'll pull some comics out of his, and we'll review them separately. I, I'll let you know what I think of mine. He'll let you know what he thinks of his, and we'll go back and forth until we're done. Won't be that long because you know he reads really slow. He only got he only picked up like four out of the box. I don't know. What you problem. let me know last night. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, did you read your comics?" He's like, "What?" I was like, "Pick four out of a box and hurry up because it's." Tomorrow, um, so now we're getting ready to do that. Uh, we're you know, kind of a quick fire review, more of a hey, this is some, this is an old comic. This is what I thought it was about, and this is what it was really about. And See, this is what I remember it being about. What I thought of it. So, okay, so we'll let the young whippersnapper go first. Oh yay! Um. Okay. So, which one did you read first? Yeah. All right. So. The one he read was Wolverine. The storyline was Enemy of the State. So this was Wolverine number 22. Uh, yeah, the sticker's covered. It's, it's of Marvel Knights, the Marvel Knights imprint. All right, and it looks like, now from my first impression, it looks like Wolverine is going to try to kill the Fantastic Four. And you would be right. All right, tell us what it's about. Hey, Rod. Um, hey, Rod, man. How you doing? Basically, uh, Reed's working on this car, uh, talking to his wife, and uh, we get uh, some Wolverine perspective. He's up in the rafters, staring at him. Um, so was, that was weird. Um, and then we went back in time a little bit, and it showed how Wolverine was uh, getting mind controlled by Hydra, because comics. Um, so. Yeah, basically that was like the entire point of the book. Wolverine just got mind controlled by Hydra and started attacking the Fantastic Four. Uh, Johnny came in, uh, grabbed him. You know, it was just a an inter it was an interesting fight scene, uh, but that was literally it. So overall, what do you think of this comic? Is it uh, recommend or was it like? You no, know, if, if you have the stuff behind it to make it make sense, then yeah. If you had the rest of the story, because you kind of read part three of six. Yes, I did. So. Yeah. He started in the middle, and when you start in the middle, exactly. on it, it's kind of kind of hard to what's going on. All right, so but art okay. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. Um, it's Ramada Junior. So I mean, I think it's I like Ramada's work. Uh, story, don't know because you don't know the rest of the story. Would you read if you had the rest of the story? Yes. All right, that's it. That's I'll go with that with a. Uh, recommend sort of um, asterisk recommend prerequisite required. <laughs> you gotta have the rest of it. All right, so <clears throat> this is a sort of recommend. The art was pretty good. Uh, Miller's doing the story, so usually a uh, Millar Miller. Uh, so usually the story is gonna probably be pretty good, but yeah. starting in the middle is not a good thing. So the uh, the young whippersnapper okay. recommends. Um, a, we're, I'm getting better at my comment too. Start at the beginning of a story arc and not in the middle. Um, for optimum reading experience. All right. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So the old, old foggy chose Challengers of the Unknown number 87. That's the middle. This is a 35 center. And it. All right. So you have here Dead Man, Swamp Thing, and the Challengers of the Unknown. That get um, launched into the past, and Swamp Thing and they're fighting a sorcerer in the past. 
Um, of course, Swamp Thing is kind of magical in and of itself. So, you know, see Swamp Thing beating, beating the tar out of people. Um, what I really liked about this comic was, I mean, there's a lot of good fight scenes in it. Um, and, but look at look at the Challenger Mountain. I like this stuff right here. I like just, I went, I went through this Challenger Mountain and I read every single one of those little lined words and the guys share a room over here and like the girl's room is like down over there and their workout rooms and library. Now, I don't know why the guys have to bunk up with so many different rooms and they're in a freaking mountain. They can't find another room for them. They have to bunk. But hey, yeah, it's comics. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I mean, a lot of machine guns. Rat, tat, 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 tat. I mean, a lot of, I mean, the art in it was really pretty good. I mean, look at that one. All these monster and mutant type things running around and uh, in this alternate dimension timeline with a sorcerer, magic bolt shooting everywhere. I mean, it was a pretty good story. Um, and then they went back into their own time and everybody said good riddance and goodbye and hey, we're fine. So, you know, so it was a nice self-contained kind of story. They went back in the past. Um yeah, I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why Deadman was there. He was like there for very, very little of the comic. And honestly, it, the fighting was pretty good, but and the art was pretty good. But the best part for me was the the whole Challenger of the Unknown Mountain. I'd love that that kind of crap. I'm just I'm weird. So for me, recommend. I like it. He enjoyed the floor plans. But overall, the Challenger of the Unknown was not a series I normally would be like. Yeah, I like that series. But it was it was a nice in the past sorcerer D and D magic that kind of stuff. It was, it was, it was okay. All right, so your turn. Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, number four. All right, so Red Hood and the Outlaws, number four. Uh, this was a lot better. Can anybody guess why the 16-year-old picked this one? Um, I picked it at random. All of them at random. Ra oh, no, it's because of this dude, right? Oh, yeah, he's a xenophobe. Z oh, what's it, what is a xenophobe? It's uh, someone who hates... It's like a racist for aliens. All right, so tell us about the story. Um, Basically... uh. They're, uh, Kenneth Rockefeller, it's good art. Um, <coughs> yeah, you don't like it. They, uh, Red Hood's uh, in his bar. He's looking for um, he's looking for that cop lady who is actually keep talking. Mm -hmm. Who's actually um, not a human. The cop wasn't a human. No, so uh, he's like, so they go and uh, investigate and. There's the cop lady. Yeah, she gets shot with like eight arrows, and she's like, "Yikes!" Ha! Uh, only copper damages me, and then he pulls out a giant copper arrow and destroys her skull. She has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight arrows in the back of her head. Then she turns around and oh, and then the final coup d'état, coup d'état. It, it just took her brain out the back. Yeah, of her. She's, yeah, she's still alive. Um. <laughs> Anyway, well, that's happening. She like an alien or something? I think so. Uh, well, that's happening. This uh, xenophobe is uh, tracking down Starfire because one of uh, one of her uh, kind uh, accidentally crashed into this uh, car, and the kid that survived in that car crash became a scientist, um, used alien DNA to genetically enhance himself to track down. All of the um, yeah. oh, I forgot. Does Sorry, that look like her head came back with maggots? Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, probably. It's it was a. Uh... That looks like maggots. Yeah, they are. I think. Anyway, um, it was an interesting, interesting book. All right, so um, recommend. Uh yeah. Uh, How was the art? Art was. Look, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! That's cool. It does a good job on the man, bat, dinosaur, reptile thing. That looks pretty cool. So, anyway, so that used to be human. No, it's not. So recommend. Uh yeah, and that's the last page. Oh, dude, look at her head. It just keeps getting worse. Yeah. It was a. Uh, no, I want to read the rest of it. Jeez. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a Red Hood and the Outlaws read. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do a series on it because I'm not that kind of person. Except that's you guys. 
All right, so recommend? Uh, yeah, uh, it got me interested to read the rest. Nice. All right, so my second book to read. Oh, yes. Frankenstein and the Creatures of the Unknown, number one, by Jeff Lemire and Adam Roberson. Now, Frankenstein is it, in the marching I, band. I agree. Now, is it basically World War II? I mean, look at that, Frankenstein. Frankenstein is basically fighting Nazis. <clears throat> We're all we all love it when you know monsters fight Nazis. It's like monsters against monsters. But they come to find a bunch of monsters underneath the ground. One's a vampire, one's like a yeti. Um, and he he frees them and they become part of a team. <coughs> and you can see here, um, you got the team. You got the vamp the vampire guy up here, you got the uh like a like a nautical swimming, and then over over there you see a, a, a like a wolverine, not a wolverine, a, a werewolf. You got Frankenstein's monster. So they're all fighting Nazis together, and they come down. The government has decided that, um, which they defeat a Nazi superhero, by the way. Yeah, right there. But and there's Hitler, and he runs away from it. But the government has decided that it's too much expense to run this team of monsters. So instead, they're going to create a GI Jake. A GI Jake. A GI Jake. Now, GI Jake stands for the Joint Action Killing Machine. It's a robot, and the robot knocks out the whole team. Um, yeah, the one robot knocks out the whole team of superheroes. So couldn't that one robot just, <coughs> just kill all the Nazis? It could, but you know, it's, you know, why would it take their jobs away? That's rude. So that one thing, you so know, killing them is better, I guess. But they put them in test tubes, and they all escape from the test tubes. You know, he he wakes up, he knocks at the test tubes. Now remember, they went to sleep in 1945, 1944, and now they wake up. It's current day, I believe, and they come out from underground. It's current day, and uh, they gotta tell the vampire, "Hey, you can't eat people." Um, the man bat gets captured by a lady named Shrive. 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 Um, so, it, I mean, it was, it was okay. Shrive. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't anything spectacular. Um, I like monster books, but it wasn't scary. It wasn't dark. It wasn't... I mean, it's Jeff Lemire. Normally, it's pretty good, but it's basically just monsters killed <laughs> Nazis and then got put up into test tubes. <laughs> hey, Spear here. How you doing, man? So, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad. It's okay. It, it it's just not. I mean, it's not one of my things I would want to read. It's not my. I wouldn't recommend it uh, for me. But it might. I mean, it wasn't bad. So take it. Take it. Take it all you will. All right. Young Whippersnapper, your turn. Uh, my book, my third, was also very boring. Um, I, I understand what you, uh, what you were referring to now. Uh, when the when you said the X Men used to play uh, team games, like uh, some baseball. Team um, Titans number eight. These guys were playing volleyball. All right. So, well, it starts out pretty good. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nightwing, look at. <clears throat> Look at the old '70s uniform, man. <laughs> yeah. So this was from 1993. All right. So Marv Wolfen, Phil Hemenes. Yeah. So it's got a good artist on it. Yeah. He starts getting eaten by rats. Uh, eaten by rats. Rats. His teeth. Teeth are weird. He looks like he's eating rats. <laughs> I mean. You get the rat's point of view from All right, so too. you've picked a comic where a woman gets eight arrows in her skull, then gets her brain ripped out, has her head put back together by maggots, and then and then you I now, chose them all by random. You now pick one where he's eating and rats, and rats are eating. No, he's not eating him. rats. The rats are just eating oh, him. He just threw a rat against the wall and it exploded. Yeah, he just planned wall rat. Remind me not to let you pick comics. Yes, please. Oh, um, man. And now we have a dead woman. Up against the wall. Yeah. All right, so keep telling us what's going on. That was on the rat. It was... The rat was a woman? <laughs> no. Uh, it was... It's... 
they're they're hunting down uh, Jack the Ripper and um, Jack the Ripper. Okay. Yeah, and um, it, he, it's just very. So it looks it's like, kind of boring. It looks like there's a vampire, dude. Yeah, apparently Jack the Ripper turns into that. Jack Jack the Ripper was a vampire, bat guy. Interesting. It's very weird. All right, and but it's boring. Um, does he become Nightwing or Deathwing? Look at that, Deathwing. He's gotta he's gotta have his chest out now. I honestly, he not hip, gonna lie, he hypnotizes people with his chest. I didn't understand most of this. <laughs> uh, oh, and he has an earring. Uh, yeah, it, it was all very, very a bat earring. Look at that. Weird. <laughs> all right, so oh, now we're playing volleyball. Okay, okay. And they're in school. So in the middle of the comic, they're in school. Oh, what is that? A bunch of skulls walking. Nothing. So what, nothing. What's making, happened with the skulls? Nothing is making sense. In what this is book? going on with skulls? I did, honestly nothing. Did you was, read this? Yes, nothing was making sense. All right, and so now Deathwing. Things just happen for no reason. Death come. Deathwing comes in and fights skulls. He's got look at. He's got. He's got a skull head, but he's got a little bit of blonde hair. That's great. He's got to be blonde. That's great. Um, it was honestly very confusing. All of it. So a bunch of vampires hanging from the roof, and it looks like Terra and all the other Titans just show up and go like, "Oh no, we're we've stepped in it now." I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, do you recommend it? Whoa. No, no, I read this book and I still don't understand what's going on. Uh, some, some adult action there at the end for Night Deathwing, and then he stabbed her. I guess. Who is she? I have no idea. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Miri. <clears throat> Dick, oh, I missed you. I love you. Well, I don't know what's going on either. All right, so recommend? Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I I have ADHD. Um, and my brain hops from place to place, and I didn't understand that. He couldn't follow along. I don't know what's going on in that book either. All right, so my next book. Was Uncanny Avengers number twenty five by Rick Remender and uh, oh, my word. Acuna, Acuna. All right, so now apparently, again, this is one of those where you stepped into the middle of something and you're like, <clears throat> "What's going on?" Apparently, Red Skull now has Professor X's mind powers. Okay. okay I don't. I don't know how he got them. I don't know why he has them, but Professor X or, or, or Red Skull has Professor X's powers, and he's mind controlling Rogue, um, Scarlet Witch, Havoc, and he says he can use Scarlet Witch to remake the world. And then uh, he's got Magneto there, but Magneto's got his helmet, so he he can't control Magneto at all. <coughs> so Magneto's you know he steps on Magneto's head. He goes, swear now to serve me. Swear it. And then Ahab goes, Ahab's holding a spear, you know, the, the normal spear. And then suddenly Magneto pulls the spear through the air and hits uh, Red Skull. And it knocks everybody loose. And so they start all fighting, right? And so now we have a big battle. Okay. Um, some woman tries to drown Havoc in a bubble. Um, I think, I don't know, what was, what was her name? So the, the villains are Dancing Water. Mizzy, Goat Face Girl, Dangerous Jen, Phelan, the Insect, and Ahab. I don't know who these people are, but she's able to control water, apparently. You can see. Um, I love how here. on the nose their names are. Dancing Water. <laughs> goat Face Girl. Goat Face Girl. Dangerous Jen. So there's a big fight scene, right? And and they're going, and everybody's fighting each other, which is okay. Um, rogues, like, punch of people. Uh, does he have the uh, sharp end of the sword in his hand? No, it's a spear. That's... So he's only, only got one sharp end. And then Mag Magneto is able to finally knock out um, Red Skull. And then he starts punching Red Skull. In and, the face. In the fa he goes, I don't need my powers for this. I can beat you with my fists. And he starts pounding Red Skull right in the face. breaks the mask open. And, and he's very Hitler-esque. 
He's got like the old yeah. the Hitler you know, Hitler hairdo, uh, and and his daughter tries to stop him, but he's like, I will not. He deserves to die, and like takes this big chunk of metal and lifts it up over his head and slams it down on Magneto's head, or not Magneto, uh, 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 Red, Red Skull. Skull's head. And squ- uh, here, that can explain it. And his daughter's like, "You're talking to me about gruesome? No, Daddy, no." All right. Um, and and everybody's just standing there. Rogue comes down. Everybody's staring at Magneto. I cannot believe you did that. Um, you're no uh, better than him. You're a monster. He goes, I, I just killed evil for forever. You know, I put, he was evil incarnate. I just put him down. Red Skull, like the Hitler of comics. I put him down. Um, and, and he's pretty, but he's like, no, I am not. You have not put me down. All you've done is unleashed onslaught. So everyone else who's mind controlled by Red Skull understands Maybe that if they were to, if he were to die, then he would get into his well, I mean, final form. Her, heroes don't kill. That you know, heroes not supposed to kill. Magneto's not a hero. Ma- Magneto, what has been a hero, and he was a hero on this, supposed yeah. to be a hero, but he killed he killed Red Skull, who had. But the problem is, onslaught was supposed to be a mix of the brains of Magneto and Professor X. So apparently, Red Skull took Magneto's mind and turned it into onslaught. I don't. I don't know that, how that happened. I don't know what the build-up to it is. Uh, Reminder is normally a pretty good story. It, it seems like a good story to me, and I want to read the rest of it. <coughs> so it re- marches into Axis, which I've got some. I'm going to have to start reading that storyline because I don't know exactly what led up to this or what followed this. But it was pretty good. So overall, Uncanny, this Uncanny Adventures was pretty good. I can't really read the rest. All right, so next I read Exiles. Number 61. <clears throat> that is a uh, mimic. That's morph. That's mimic in Namorita. Um, and these are all these are all people from other dimensions. Now, the whole premise of Exiles was there's a terminus armband that uh, Blink wears that transports <clears throat> everybody everywhere to fix problems in the timeline. Yeah. And they use heroes. That have died and they were about to die in their own timeline. Hey, John, how you doing, man? Um, and they so they grab people that are about to die in their own timeline, pull them into this group, and this group now is a group of heroes that goes dimension hopping, um, kind of like quantum leap, and they jump to different dimensions to fix whatever issue is going on in that dimension. So you get to see different versions of your standard heroes, <clears throat> like Mimic here, who normally had the powers of the original X Men. But this mimic has the powers of the second group of X Men, Wolverine and Colossus. And you see, he's got claws, and he's got he's all armored up at Colossus. So we've got some interesting. The, the idea is interesting. It was one of those underrated comics that I don't. I mean, I don't think it ever got. I mean, that it could it, have gone. It gone on for a long. It went on for a long time, but it just it never seemed to be one of those popular ones. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they fight. <clears throat> so that is the that is. Uh, the son of Apocalypse, they call him the son of the Apocalypse, but I think his name was Apocalypse. I can't remember his name now. No, Holocaust. That was his name. So Holocaust is here. They're fighting Holocaust. That was a really pretty good fight. Um, Morph with his brass knuckles, hate and pain. <laughs> uh, um, some Yeah, dumb jokes. And then there's Apocalypse, the black the dark beast. You got Sabretooth here. Now, Sabretooth appears to be wearing the terminus at the point at this point. <coughs> which is that little device right there. Uh, um, down on his right there, right there. Yeah. And so um they blink and they come up to Magneto and they start fighting Magneto and Sunspot, which is a new version of Sunspot right there. Right. There's not a lot to this story, honestly. It's just um, Magneto's there. They, they they fix the timeline. They leave Magneto's there to finish up. And so Magneto is from that timeline. They're like, hey, you need to finish up. They've got to protect Macron Crystal. So the rest of them leap to protect the Macron Crystal. And that's funny. You see Morph? He's looking like Spock. Um, so they leaped and they now have jumped into this new time zone. 
or dimension. I'm not sure what's going to happen in that dimension. <clears throat> but overall, I mean, the story was just a standard fill in kind of end of the, it's like an epilogue. You know, they kind of wrapped up what was happening. So not knowing what happened in the stories before, it was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, but overall, I, I like I liked the series and I liked the premise. And this wasn't bad. It just was one of those. It's like, oh, you know, it's like a wrap up to what was going on. So I'm I'm kind of missing our new comic books. <coughs> <laughs> I miss new comics. All right. I mean, these are not bad. All right. So instead of doing a separate video on the to finish up our story arc, I'm just going to do it here, real Ooh. quick, because. I don't feel like making a separate video when, you know. All right. So if you've watched the rest, you watched uh, the uh, Round Robin Sidekicks Revenge. These are the last two issues. Three, Amazing Spider-Man 357. Now, this book has kind of fallen apart on me. So the premise is there's a secret empire, and the uh, old sidekick of Moon Knight has now become a sideboard for the secret empire and is now t um, trying to get back at his old leader, um, <clears throat> Moon Knight, while at the same time doing the bidding of the Secret Empire, he's had a nurse that's helped him get over the pain inducer so he can, you know, do his own thing. Um, um, Punisher was hurt last time and taken, uh, and he, but he kind of ducked out real quick. We don't know where he went. Nova's been captured by the Secret Empire and held in chains. And yeah, 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 that's good stuff. Um, and so this was done by uh, Milgram and Bagley did the layouts. Yep. So now Nova. Spider-Man, Moon Knight, and um, they're the three that are left together. Uh, Punisher in this issue actually escapes from the... They, they're trying to help him recover. He escaped and actually infiltrated the Secret Empire space and put on the uh, costume of number three. Now, he's still kind of damaged from fighting three giant robot dudes, three giant armored robot armored dudes called the Screamer, I don't know, Siphon, something like that. So he's kind of out, and he infiltrates the Secret Empire, passes out, but he's going to do his best to try to help the team. Um, the three others decide to split up for the night because, hey, they've got no leaves. They don't, they're going to pick it up in the morning. <clears throat> of course, Spider-Man ran out on MJ um, as she was making dinner, but she was making dinner in gym clothes, which I found very odd to me. You know, who, who makes dinner in wearing spandex shorts and but hey so he shows up at the house sees her, uh. sees her sleeping on the couch um and he's like sorry i ran out on dinner um uh, i'll make it up to you you know the normal spider-man thing and then moon knight comes home meets up with his girlfriend and he's like sorry babe um uh you know i'm really worried right now because my old you know my old sidekick is the one causing all the problems and then we see power a uh, powerball blasting blast of things we see um night thrasher actually punches and breaks a piece of wood just like Kusha. now he's not superhuman strong so i don't know why he has the ability to do this but he doesn't so anger anger and then we see them working on midnight again which is the moon knight sidekick who is in a cybernetic form cybernetic form um punisher comes and sees that nova's trapped so he actually cuts some of the lines <coughs> hey when you when you get a chance break out and i'll, I'll distract them as much as possible so Nova's like, gotcha. And he breaks out of everything because, uh, you know, Punisher cut the lines, etc. At the same time, Punisher's like, in, in this number three guys of the Secret Empire goes, he's trying to conquer us. And so he points at Midnight and everybody tries to attack Midnight. It, it doesn't work for long. Um, he, you know, Midnight easily defeats the Secret Empire guys, beats up, uh, cuts the Punisher's shirt, and you can see it's the Punisher. So now it's a full-on fight, and the but Nova is able to get the word out. So now Dark Hawk, um, Night Thrasher, um, Moon Knight, Spider Man all show up at the Secret Empire to help fight with Punisher and Nova. Honestly, so, a pretty cool fight scene. I mean, look at this. Great art, great fight scene. Powerball shows up in a secret in, uh, armor. It, 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 full on, just you know, bang, da, 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 a lot of stuff going on here. Good stuff. So. But you know, Dark Hawk is a young kid. He gets knocked out by power, you know, Powerball. Moon Knight takes on a uh, Midnighter, but he kind of, but Lynn, just before he can knock him out, Lynn, the nurse, grabs him with one hand, lifts up Moon Knight, and tosses him across the room. <laughs> and then we find out she is technically Mrs. Moon Knight or Midnight. Mrs. Midnight, sorry. Mrs. Midnight 
but she's also secret empire person number one. You know what? That makes sense. She's she's the chief bad guy. All right. So <clears throat> that was issue number five and six. Then we get the last and final issue of the Round Robin's Revenge. And look, I mean, look at this. This is fantastic. So a full Ooh. wraparound cover with all the main heroes in this issue. So we got Nova, Night Thrasher, Spider-Man, Punisher, Moon Knight, and Darkhawk all in this issue. So again, we're, we're starting out with the fight scene. Great splash page here. All right. We got two robotic cyborgs of superpowers and the whole their whole team in um, Powerball versus the six heroes. Lots of fighting going on, shooting, banging, slashing, you know, the, the normal fight stuff. And then the the robotic team shows up in the middle of that. Um, the armored mercenary team called the Seekers. All right, so let me show you that. You see one of the good right there. That's one of them. So there's a team of three, Chain, Sonic, and Grasp, or something like that. So they show up, and they, they're they a side with the Secret Empire, of course, because Secret Empire is going to pay them extra. So they're like, hey, let's show up and fight. They're paying us extra. Um, but uh, what's her face? Or what's his face? Midnight decides to shoot an ice blast um, at Spider-Man. Spider-Man uses spider senses, jumps out of the way, and it actually freezes Sonic. You can see an ice around you know, all, all over here. You can see ice. And just then, Punisher pulls out a knife. The guy's like, no, if he, if he stabs me through my ice slit, I'm a dead man. But he just takes the, the tail of the knife and smacks it against the armor, and the armor shatters. Then he knocks the dude out. They get Nova out. Um, they're beating up. Night Thrasher's got a chain around his neck. The guy's choking him. And so Moon Knight puts the Sonic Disruptor, the, the energy sucker, right on the back of Chain and starts knocking him out. Ooh. And then uh, Lynn is, and, and Midnight are going after Spider-Man. And they're, I mean, Spider-Man's taking a beating. Uh, and then because Midnight goes after knows. Moon Knight because that's who he really wants. Spider-Man lashes his arm, keeps him from fighting. He pulls Spider-Man close. Lynn hits him, slams him into the floor. She starts punching him. Spider-Man puts a wad of stuff in her face. And she rips off. She's like, I can't see. And she rips the webbing off, right? And and all you know, what, what you see is this right here. Look at that. Look at that face. You get you get her. We get a robotic face. And he's like, no. He did this kind of. Right. Lynn, your face. What did they do to it? So he only liked her because she's beautiful. And, and she said, no more than they did to yours. Which is true because he looks the exact freaking same. So why was he complaining? I don't get that part. Okay. Oh my goodness. But when when did this book come out? Um ninety two. I was still in high school. Um so yes, but my face, my body has been all but ruined by all the energy blasts. What would it what why would you voluntarily let them do this to you? Fool, I didn't want this pointless pride, the vanity of humanity, trappings that uncover me. This face never changes, never ages. It's fitting face for a god. You're not a god, you're a monster. No, I'm superior unlike yourself. I knew you were unworthy of the gifts the Empire has bestowed so, upon you. Hey, Mike, how you doing, man? So, you know, he only liked her because she was pretty. Hmm. Uh, I, well, well, probably because she turned herself into a robot that he considers himself a monster. She turned herself into the same thing. By choice. By choice, where well, he had no choice. I can understand, but still it comes across as a little petty there, there, midnight. And so we still have the fighting. Um so now the two uh, main villains are fighting each other. Powerball decides to, hey, um, I'm gonna jump in on the side of midnight, which he does, and he starts knocking out Lynn, but it doesn't last long. And so everybody's fighting, yeah. and the only thing they can do, and um Powerball, I think Powerball does it. Or, uh, no, who does it? Uh, oh, they cause the blast. So as, as they're fighting, they're blasting the pillars. Now, they're like in a sub-basement area, right? So it's blasting all the pillars. So Spider-Man and Moon Knight and everybody grabs Nova. They grab everybody, and they pull everybody out of the building as fast as they could. But they weren't able to get the two cyborgs or Powerball. But Powerball busts his way out and says, uh, or Thunderball. Keep calling him Powerball. 
Thunderball. He goes, yeah, I made it, Spider-Man. And seeing uh, as how there's just me against five of you guys, what to say? I surrender. He goes, yeah, they were crushed, but uh, a beam arched over me, and I was safe, and I was protected, and I actually used their arms <laughs> to uh, break my way out. That's great. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're gone. That just means they don't know, have arms. They don't have each. Don't have one arm, but they're cyborgs. They can live without the arm. So they're like, oh, yes. He goes, look at this. Look at it this way, though. He chose the wrong side. And it turned out his union of the secret empire did them a lot more damage. He may have crippled them or that organization permanently. So ultimately, in his death, he helped the good guys. Not a bad way for the Moon Knight's partner to go out. All right. And that's it. That's the, that's the end of the story. So overall, I liked the whole arc because it just has so many different heroes in it. I mean... It had you know Punisher, Moon Knight, Nova, Night Thrasher, um, Spider Man, cool Moon Knight, all but... pretty cool characters. All normally loner characters, um, except for um, Nova and, and Night Thrasher. They were on a team called New Warriors when they were good, um, when they were cool. Um, the, the New Warriors they were a part of the team, so those two joined in with Punisher, M Moon Knight, not, you know Dark Hawk, Spider Man. It was cool. It was interesting to see them try to figure out what's going on. Who is this? We had the nice little twist at the end, the whole cyborg thing, the whole need for revenge. It was... And they're probably not dead. Not a satisfactory ending, um, but the fight scenes were great. Bagley's art was great. Milgram's writing was good. So overall, I would say it's a recommend as a story arc. It was, it was good. It could have been better. Not top tier, but it was good. It was solid. So oh, that was good. I liked it, and I really, really enjoyed it. So that's the end of that. I have a stack of other ones. That I read this week, so far this week, and you know, but um, I think we've bored you guys enough already. And uh, the young whippersnapper only picked four. You said three or four would be fine. Which which book, uh, Mike? This one or these? <coughs> yeah, the Spider Man stuff. Yeah, there's there's six total in the story arc. So there's six total in the story arc. And so we, we reviewed the rest of them already. It has that Marvel team up feel. It, it is. It's like a it's a it's a it's a great run. Um it's a good team up. It, I mean it was a good story all around. And uh yeah, I, and I liked all the different heroes. I liked the mentoring between Spider-Man and Dark Hawk, Dark Hawk being a young kid. You know, just learning the great the ropes. I like Punisher even leaving the group and doing his own thing, but still helping the others when he could. Um, yeah, the the uh, the best the best cover is probably this one, where it's a nice wraparound has all six, but it's kind. I mean, it's just the six. It looks like six headshots. I mean, it's not. There's not not very dynamic, but it, it was yeah. cool. Um, but overall, that's what we got for this week. Since there's no new comic books, we decided to Bummer. grab four or five from the box. Um, yeah, the villain. Yeah, yeah, easy. So we grab four from the box, five from the box. Review each of them. He viewed some. I reviewed some, um, and it was great. So, yeah, comic book picking skills uh, for me is awful so far. So, yeah, he, he picked all the the bloody ones, boring ones. I don't know what confusing. Well, I mean, but, but then again, he's sixteen, and and some of the books he picked were from you know back when I was in school. So it's a whole different generation. But it was... Yeah, a, you were the young whippersnapper. I was a young whippersnapper back then. So, you know, we'll do this again next week. Where we'll pick a few and we'll just review them because, you know, I find it fun and I'm going to read them anyway. So I might as well just talk about them when I'm done. And tomorrow mm -hmm. we have our normal comic news and uh, haul. Um, we still have... See, if you look back behind the whippersnapper over there, I got all those boxes over there are still things I have not actually... Um, shown on the screen yet. So, also this bookshelf has a bunch. Yeah, we have some more stacks over there. So we got a lot of stuff in our, our tomorrow night when we do our normal uh, five thirty Sunday live stream. We'll go through yeah. some more comics that we have not actually done yet. Um, yeah. So we'll do that. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed our quick fire review of comics from when we were kids. Uh, <laughs> when 
I was a kid. He read a bunch of comics from when I was a kid too. Does like, so, yeah. Now you see why I collect so much for times like these. <laughs> that's right. We have something to do while we're all stuck in the house. <laughs> um, so we appreciate everybody joining us that did, and we'll see you next time here in, in the long, long box. box. Oh, goodbye.